Most bankers aren't ready to help you until after their third cup of coffee. But with Central National Bank's after-hours service, you don't have to wait for the bank lobby to open to get help. You can contact us from 6 to 8.30 in the morning or from 5 to 10 in the evening, and we'll connect you to a real, live, local person who can answer questions and fix problems seven days a week. Bank different. Bank central. Central National Bank. Member FDIC. Hey y'all, I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Showed in. Because we about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Hey y'all, this is April. And this is Caroline. Bloody happy hour time. What is today? Today is Tuesday. It we got a quickie for you. Quickie day. And I have not been all in the news, so I'm hoping you are going to tell me the story that I want to hear about because I've seen it, but I hadn't looked into it. So where are we going? What are oh, we doing? Is it the, that... Um, Brian Koberger finally came out with his alibi. Was that the story? Oh, I did see that. Because it was. I mean, you can't miss out on that. When I mean, it comes April, up, he was out looking at the stars. He was grounding. He was stargazing. <laughs> stargazing okay. and grounding. It's a real thing. I, I, I what, just found out. I don't out. even know what's grounding. Grounding is a real thing. It's research space. You take your f- shoes off and you put you plant your feet. In the ground, and all your negative energy goes into the ground, and you get all the positive energy from the earth. It's research-based. Wow. So if you do that while looking at the sun and the stars, no way you'll ever commit murder. No. Yeah, no. so, I mean, case over. I mean, why is there even a trial? <laughs> why, is there, why is there even a trial? Why? How was he Maybe that's why they suspect? keep... <laughs> he was clearly busy. Wow. So, I don't know if that's the story you wanted to hear, but that's what I needed everybody to hear. Um, but we're going to Oklahoma because we got a situation out there with those people in Oklahoma. We got a little cult. What? Mm. Are these these moms? The moms aren't in the cult. The killers. Oh, hell. Come on. So, and the the moms, it was, one of them was the mom of the kids the other one was just like a, a supervisor. She just went along with her 
as her like CPS supervisor, something like that. Yeah. So, so you have supervised visits. Okay. Yeah. So she was just completely like innocent, innocent just yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's come on. Mm-hmm. Start from the beginning. Okay. So a two week search for these uh, two missing Kansas women came to a fatal end. Whenever uh, Oklahoma authorities confirmed that both of them were dead. Um, and they announced the arrests of four people who allegedly belonged to an anti-government group who called themselves God's Misfits. Oh, goodness. Mm-hmm. Um, so Veronica Butler, 27, and Jillian Kennedy, 39. Those were the, those were the two moms. We'll yeah. just call them the two moms. They are both moms. Um, they disappeared on March 30th while driving to pick up Butler's two children for a birthday party. Uh, OSBI, OSBI, yeah, um, confirmed that, confirmed their, bo- th- like it was their bodies that okay. they found. Okay, so the four suspects, and we went. They were missing for a week? They were missing for a while. They are missing for a while, and I think, I think, well, to the public they were. I think the police probably found them earlier. Found them earlier. Wait. There was a burner phone involved. There was tracking and they tracked it and we'll get into that. So four suspects are charged and like, wow, that took a turn. Like I, we didn't see this coming. Um, and we have Tiffany Adams okay. with one F and one Y. Tiffany. <laughs> okay. That it's different. It's, she is grandma. Okay. And she, but looks grandma like, of who? Of the kids. So the her, kids that they're going to pick up. Yes. Okay. Her son and mom. Her son married the the one of the victims. Ven- okay, yeah. Vanessa. Yeah, but the son was like in jail for something, and then he was like in rehab, so he was nowhere around at the time. So I, for some reason, grandma had the kids. And mom was trying to get custody back, and it was this whole thing. So but the kids safer was, on this cult well, than with the mama. There Why was, does the mom have to have supervision? There was this. Um, oh, these poor kids. There was going to be a hearing where mom was about to get custody, uh, like on the April seventeenth or something. And so she, so grandma had to, she had to do the business. She okay. had to take care of the business. So we have Tiffany Adams, 54, her boyfriend, Tad Cullum, 43, Cole Twombly, 50, and Cora Twombly. Now, you got to see these people. I saw them. I mean, they're beautiful. Uh, they are gorgeous. Yeah. I don't know. I would, I, I would be in the cult. <laughs> I would join it for sure because they're like a good looking crew. So they're all charged with two counts of first degree murder, kidnapping, and conspiracy to commit murder. Now, this was kind of confusing because the judge entered all not guilty pleas for all of them. But then, according to um, a motion to deny, well, they, they obviously they're like, we kn- they don't need to be bailed out, they, do- they need to be denied bail. But it said that grandma provided a recorded statement to law enforcement indicating that her responsibility for the death of the deceased. So she admitted that she did it. Okay. So I don't understand why the judge enters non guilty pleas for them. So they're about to go within some type of insanity. Okay, good. Um, the judge also said that all four of them have resources significant are sufficient to organize and execute this complex murder. Therefore, they also have resources to flee if given the opportunity. So they were not given any bail. They're, so they're in jail. And now a word from our sponsors. Step into the unexpected with Cultastic or how to start a cult without really trying. A podcast where cult creation unfolds in the most unpredictable way. Join us on a unique journey into the world of theoretical cult formation. Unlike any other podcast, each episode of Cultastic is co-written in part using ChatGPT, and we let it decide our fate, good or bad. What makes Cultastic truly intriguing? We don't know what's coming each week. Together with our AI co-author, we'll discover and build this cult 
one episode at a time, exploring various aspects of cult dynamics, leadership, and group psychology. Delve into themes of charisma, influence, and the power of group thinking. It's a blend of expert analysis, theoretical exploration, and the unforeseen twists of AI-generated ideas. Remember, Cultastic is an exercise in imagination and education where we weave a narrative one episode and one tenant at a time. Curious about where this journey will take us? Subscribe to Cultastic or How to Start a Cult without really trying on your favourite podcast platform or at roguemedianetwork.com. Let's build this mission to save the people of Earth week by unpredictable week. Hey, I'm Blair. And I'm Brittany. And we're the host of By By the the Cover Cover Podcast. (laughs) We cover everything from mysteries, thrillers, romance, chiclet, and even some smut. Don't forget the smut. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We're so excited to get this thing going and share this with you guys. We've been talking about this for months and it's finally, finally happening. Yes. Special shout out to Rogue Media for helping us with this. For sure, for <laughs> sure. You can find us on Instagram at by the cover underscore podcast. You can also find us on Facebook and TikTok, so don't forget to give us a follow on those two also. And we are so excited to dive into some of our favorite books and share those with you. We can't wait. Hope you love it. Yeah, Tiffany, Grandma, uh, yep. Bitter, bitter custody battle was happening, and on April 13th, Saturday, April 13th, Oklahoma authorities arrested all of these lovely people. Um, There was a, one of the witnesses said that they were, I already told you, they're part of this anti-government group, religious affiliation, and... They had held regular meetings at the home of the Twombly's and another couple. Um, so they were like, and the, the even the property that she lived on was like huge. And I, how do they always get I all this don't land? No, but I think they were obviously like cooking meth because they they did not have teeth and they looked great. Um, so they said that. Do, 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 court records said that oh blood was okay according to court records blood was left on the road and butler's glasses were found near a broken hammer a magazine for a pistol was inside of one of the victim's purses um but they didn't really say if they found any firearms so they're real tight-lipped about stuff so ob- uh what has come out that we have heard evidence suggests that the killings were planned and that grandma had a prepaid burner phone. She had multiple cell phones and five stun guns. Damn. And there were searches on her phone. And they were taser pain level. She searched for gun shops. She searched prepaid cellular phones and how to get someone out of their house. So that was an interesting search. Apparently, this group had tried to kill her before. Mm-hmm. What? By uh, attempting to lure her out of her home in Kansas. Oh, so that's why she's Googling how to get someone out of their home. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. So, uh-huh. yes. And then it says the authorities believe that Tiffany, Grandma Tiffany, allegedly killed Butler because she was possibly, uh, she had a possibility to be granted unsupervised visits with her children during a hearing that was scheduled April 17th. So she was going to, I don't know why she didn't have custody, but anyway. Um, they said that they were, yeah, Adams, let's see, do, 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 Tiffany. And her son and was only allowed supervised wow. visits with the children on Saturday. So I don't, it was a whole big old mess. Kelly, the person who was the other one, who was not the mom, who was the supervisor, yeah. 
pastor's wife, mother of four. Wow. Uh, at <coughs> First Christ- Christian Church in Kansas. Yep, in Kansas. Um, and in recent months, she had accepted a new job with Willow Christian Church uh, in Nebraska that she hadn't started yet. Um, she, I mean, that's so, awful. So yeah. usually if you don't, because people, I know somebody that was a supervisor yeah. as like a part-time job. Okay. Because yeah. think about CPS and like all the, so many families have to have supervised visits, but your supervisor has to be somebody without a record. So if nobody in that immediate family is without a record, mm-hmm. they have to go to this list yeah. that CPS gives them. and But that list is very short, uh-huh. meaning like there's not a lot of people out there to do it. So, so I have a friend that was doing that as like part time on the weekends. She would go and like meet them at Chuck E. Cheese for two hours and she would just be there to make sure yeah. the parent who needed the supervised visit wasn't leaving mm-hmm. with the kid mm-hmm. or if she was, she was right. Or if they were, she was right there. Yeah. So this lady was probably either one, a member of the church and was mm-hmm. agreed to be mm-hmm. a supervisor. Mm-hmm. Like they were members yep. of each church or this was just like a, a side gig that she was doing to yeah. make extra money. Um, invest. Okay, this Either is this so is the juicy part. So they found out that Tiffany, Grandma Tiffany, had purchased three burner phones, all of which pinged near where Butler's car was found, and a uh, and at the last known location of the women before their disappearance, cell phone data from the two burner phones led authorities to a pasture property rented by Colum. Who's Colum? Oh, I think that's the boyfriend. Rented by the boyfriend. Uh. And where a, a hole had been dug and then filled back in. So the disturbed dirt was excavated. Ex- Shoot. Excavated. Mm-hmm. Uh, and two bodies later identified as Butler and Kelly were discovered. And this was about eight and a half miles from where the abandoned car was. The state of the bodies indicated they died as a result of foul play. Um, there was a stun gun that was found nearby. They, as far as I know, we don't have exactly what their conditions of their body, what it sounds like. If there's a hammer and a stun gun, it's not good. And they had to wait this long to actually identify. And they put them in this, yeah. And they're like, oh, man, they just brutally murdered these people. Just to keep the kids. Yeah. She wanted her son to have his kid when he got out of jail. So oh, she's she she being, being a good grandma. Yeah, she actually was a good grandma. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you got to just do what you got to do. You got to take it into your own hands. Yeah. You know, you just got to, it's part of it. So. Uh, I see that the actual leader of the God's Misfits group, they call him Squirrel, said that um, they are detaching themselves from these four people, oh. that um, it is not an anti government cult, and that they are oh. just about spreading the love of Jesus. And not what these four uh, wh- are about. So are the four, were they trying to develop their own cult and be God's misfits? Or is God's misfits is the... Because if they are so... If they're loving Jesus, why are they saying they're God's misfits? Everybody. I mean, we're all misfits. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. We're... God. I don't know. But uh, I'm glad that Squirrel really came out and gave a statement and was like, you know what? They're not part of this cult anymore. They're out. So hopefully, yeah. So Squirrel did a, I, I actually like that. I mean, I Squirrel. trust everybody named Squirrel, so. Uh, absolutely. I might go visit his church. Let's go to Milwaukee and, uh. You oh, know. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Because, you know, th- <laughs> this is a, this is going to be a little, uh, mm-hmm, human remains. <sighs> we got body parts. We're never, we, we're always satisfied when we go to Milwaukee. Yeah. Never in shock. More human remains, including a torso, that are believed to belong to a missing woman have washed up on a beach along Lake Michigan. What? The torso and an arm believed to belong to 19-year-old... Okay, it's spelled S-A-D-E, but it's like Sajay or Uh Suave. Suave. Okay. 
it looks like Sade Robinson. So okay. I'm going to call her Robinson because I'm going to mess the name up. Yeah. And Sade. Yeah, it's like Sade. Oh, I think it is Sade. Sade. Because I was like, Sade. Do I know this story? Go. Yeah. So 19-year-old Sade was found Thursday morning along this remote stretch of tree-lined beach in South Milwaukee, quarter of a mile from an apartment complex. The remains were found by someone walking on the beach. Uh, Maxwell Anderson, who's 33 years old, uh, has been charged with first degree intentional homicide for mutilating a corpse and arson of, I think he, I think he blew up her car. He probably blew her up her car and she was, in, and then he like took her and chopped her up and like put her stuff all over, put her, put her body all over the place. Um, yeah. Mutilating a corpse and arson. That. That's what he's charged with. A phone message. Oh, yeah. Nobody. Nobody. Uh, let's see. He was arrested on April 4th, <laughs> two days after a leg believed to belong to that they thought belonged to Robinson. Uh, the leg had been severed just below the hip. Surveillance video from a restaurant showed Robinson and Anderson sitting together at a bar on April 1st. He burned her car. The ne- Oh, her burned car was found the next morning. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. But like that's that, that's all I that's all we have about that so far. But this is brand new. That's brand new. But when did she go miss? Has she been missing for a while? No. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's all it's all new. All yeah. the murder and everything. Okay. okay. So if he was arrested on April fourth, it's not that. I mean, yeah, it just happened. It was okay. There was another story that was similar that basically legs kept washing up like a, a, a arm a wash up and a leg a wash up. But they were like, we don't know that it's murder because you can live without your arm. You can live without your leg. <laughs> but then uh-huh. like the rest of her had to wash up before they had to charge him with murder. Oh, but I, I don't my think this gosh. is it. No. Yeah. Torso, arm. Oh, it, she got went on a date with this guy. Mm-mm. Yep. But I don't know why he had to go chop her up. Like, oh, and then later they found a foot. Oh, all over the loca- all over the place. I mean, he just threw. He was real mad. She did not compliment him well. I guess she did not like. She was not about him. So we don't know why it was just an innocent date. Yeah. Mm-hmm. April 1st. Oh, it was April 4th. Oh, no. They, mm-mm. It, they ate seafood. Maybe there was something bad in the seafood. I mean, he, I would, I would probably go on a date with that guy. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I would say, I wouldn't even, I would not have swiped on that. <laughs> Maybe he actually looks like Jax from Sons of Anarchy. When I, he's all okay, I can I can see I I, I can see uh, that's the vibe I get from him. Yeah, so we'll we, we will uh, circle back to <laughs> that one. Those are the two big ones, and then I, do you know uh, Trevor Bauer, the baseball player? He or he was, but I don't know anything about him until this. So this girl came out a couple of weeks, well, whenever it was, she came out and accused him of sexual assault, and she like had the video, she like videoed herself and just was saying that she was like horribly beaten up, but like she had obviously no bruises, like she had nothing. Um, so basically it's like a me too fraud that there this guy was a baseball player uh-huh. he was a pitcher um trevor bauer he won the cy young he was a cy young winner i guess that is like a a really big deal in baseball okay. it's like a if you're a pitcher um it's the highest accolade a pitcher can get okay he's a multi-millionaire pitcher so women were like trying to come after the money you know you know how they'd be doing and we have Lindsay Hill who straight up lied about him. And then another girl, another girl lied about him, but she is actually facing charges and has been indicted because she, uh, claimed fraud. Like she was trying to extort him and she's charged with like fraud and extortion. Good. But the Lindsay Hill. Okay. This is where I got to play this little interview because it was real good. And y'all have to hear it because I had to hear it. And let me,
Former Dodgers pitcher Trevor Bauer is speaking out after settling a lawsuit with a woman who accused him of sexual assault. Bauer released this video today claiming that he has evidence his accuser set him up and was trying to take his money. Trevor says everything was complete. And also, let me interject, uh, he was like suspended from baseball for these Oh, yes, for these claims. His life. And so he's like, can't play. He's now playing baseball for some Canada league. Oh, man. So like just from just from these stupid ass claims that were all fake. So then so that was the first one. This is now Lindsay Hill. Consensual. He also released these text messages that came out in court indicating that you had planned the whole thing out. So I want to read some of these mm. texts from you to a friend between the two of you before you this. met Trevor, this one. Uh -huh. Next victim, star pitcher for the Dodgers. Okay, victim is an interesting choice of words. I'm, I'm gonna allow you a chance to explain yourself, but after you agreed to meet, you asked your friend what, should, what you should steal. Your friend answered his money. Uh, he says another one from you to a friend. I'm going to his house Wednesday. I already have my hooks in. You know how I roll with a screenshot in which you told him tryouts don't scare me Bauer pick a day and I am there. Here are some more after you and Trevor met up net worth is 51 million to which your friend responds bitch you better secure that bag. Your text, need daddy to choke me out, being an absolute whore to try to get in on his 51 million. Oh my goodness. You say this wasn't a setup. How can you expect anyone to believe that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. She, uh, and, and her responses are like, well, that's a very good question. I'm so glad you asked that. <laughs> As it's she's like, thinking of her life. Uh, exactly. So that, those are just like, I'm glad that the one girl is getting like, uh, charged with shit and like has to go to jail for a little bit. I don't really know much about her, but I just know this Lindsay Hill. But this is happening other places. This oh. all this this and let me. This is the last one I'll tell. Is this guy named Clayton Eckert? He was a. He was on the. Oh, he was on season eighteen of The Bachelorette. Okay. Then he was the star of twenty season twenty six. He was The Bachelor. Okay. Okay. So, and he played like college football and went to the NFL for just like a minute and he did, the, did like training camp for the Seahawks in 2016. Anyways, he hooks, did I tell you his name? Clayton Eckerd. Yeah. He uh, hooks up with this chick. Literally, they hook up for five hours. They, she gave him two blowies and they were on gummies. She then like five days later says that she's pregnant <laughs> because I didn't know you get pregnant from the blowjob. But then the, apparently they were naked grinding. Okay. They were dry grinding. So maybe, maybe he, there was some like crusted <laughs> oh, that slipped up in there. This bitch went and she, he had to get a restraining order against her because she kept like harassing him over and over. She shows up on the zoom hearing Rubbing her pregnant belly. No way. Yes. She was pregnant before. Chugging a monster. Oh. And this has gone on. This is, I don't even know how long it's been going on, but like over, like it's, it's beyond. But what hearing for what? A restraining order hearing. Oh, okay. But, okay. and so, I mean, and she's had like probably, I think 11 different attorneys mm -mm. and like they keep, cause she, I, and she's like a nepo baby. She like her parents have like all this money, but it's just another a uh, fault. Like she, clearly she was never pregnant because then and then she said she was pregnant with twins. Uh -huh. She's gonna have them on February fourteenth. <laughs> Gosh! But she never could like n none of the doctors have ever heard of her. They've tried to get like she sent these ultrasounds and then somebody they're like, OK, that's actually we did a reverse re reverse Google. And then it's like the exact same ultrasound that you could find online. Oh, my goodness. Like she is batshit. And, and beyond, it goes beyond that. Like this is like the TLDR, like super condensed version. But if you want to look into that, like, her name and her name is uh, Laura Owens, I think Laura Owens. But Clay crazy. Clayton Eckerd. Crazy bitches. Laura Owens, y'all with y'all sons out there, y'all better. I hate it. I, I know. Hate it, I, hate I it. know. Just I, I didn't know that you could even be accused mm -hmm. of 
sex assault, whatever, or like that you got some girl <laughs> pregnant when you didn't have sex with her. Yeah. Huh. Shocked. I can't even. Dismayed. Disapproved. I think that's all. Yep. Okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, there you go. I'm You're speechless welcome. about the I know, so, girl. Yeah. I can't even. Mm-hmm. I know. Can't even. Can't even. Okay. Good stuff. We'll see y'all Thursday. We are going to Germany. Oh, my God. I love Germany. Germany. Not really. Um, and we oh, are I'm, taking I'm it back. I'm German, so I should. Yeah. 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 Okay, good. We're taking it back. Um, Way back. Way back. Oh, are we going, like, to the... Like, 18? Oh. Is this believe. might be bef- this might even be the earliest like because I did one about a ship 1883 I did the cannibal ship yeah and I got a good sto- I got a good story for y'all uh for a life story um that This has been a Rogue Media Podcast. This has been a Rogue Media Network production.